There are those that just want to be left alone, and those that just won't leave them alone. Which one are you? The Ernest Hancock Show. Yeah, we're wanted. Got a hot price on our head, and uh, who put the price on? Who's going to come collect it? Who's going to turn to stand who? I don't know, but we need to start thinking about it because I can tell you what's going to happen. It's going to start getting, you know, like East Germany kind of stuff. Yeah, there's going to be those in support of the government and those out. And where's the power structure? Where Where's the emphasis? Who who has the focus? Who Who's the most influential? Well, you know, it's uh, those willing to use force. Now, it ultimately comes down to that. But, you know, if we start being forceful now, you know, just rationalize and justify in there. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to go take over Washington and say, now we rule. <laughs> I, you know, the best thing a lot of times is just ignore them, you know, until it gets down. That was one of the, the, the discussion last night, the economic discuss, discussion group was Alan Corwin. He's author of a lot of uh, gun text, you know, about uh, gun laws in various different states and Supreme Court rulings and everything. You know, he does a lot of research on that. And he wanted to have a discussion on what is going to constitute the collapse. You know, define that. What, what does that mean? And a lot of people had different, you know, uh, views and so on. Mine was, look, let me tell you what a collapse is, is when those that don't have anything available to keep sustaining their life, you know, they're too cold, too hot, don't have enough food, water, start influencing the lives of those that did prepare. When you got the people that didn't prepare motivated to take from those that did, you know, there's your collapse. You know, who, who protects whom here? You know, you know I, I, where is the protection going to be? So I, I'm, so when things go, you know, I, you know, I, we can last a while. He asked a question, how many people in this room, of which are about 30, have prepared themselves to have water and fuel and uh, sustenance to last them six months? I think he was shocked. At least a third half of the people raised their hand. He's like, wow, you know, he, he didn't expect that. Because he's, you know, a different mindset. So I'm going, okay, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of them are going, no, we're just going to go to another country. We're just going to hop on the plane and leave and we'll get out in time and, you know, sucks to be y'all. Well, not everybody has that ability. So it, we had Greg Tivnan that was a guest last week. He's visiting here. His daughter graduated this last weekend from University of Arizona as an architect. And she's going to be writing a sequel to the article that she wrote as a 17-year-old for a newspaper back in 04. She's going to be writing for the magazine. His other daughter is a great illustrator, and she's going to be doing some of the illustrations. Well, Greg gave a presentation before we got into what to do about him moving over a decade, 12 years ago, to a self-sustaining farm in Missouri. And he made the point, he's going, look, man, uh, you know, if you think you're going to survive on the Lone Prairie out there, you know, you need to know a bunch of things. And he's like, Really, the bottom line was you're better off just to you know prepare where you're at and just stay home. You know, make sure you got all your goodies and just stay there. So it's uh, it was an interesting discussion on what we should do in order when to to understand when the collapse comes, what does that mean, and how to survive it, and what role the government's going to play and all that. So it, there's varying opinions. There's no one dominating other than it's cheap insurance to just have stuff ready. Now, and why not? So I, 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 I bought enough uh, foot powder, uh, um, anti athletes foot cream, uh, uh, NyQuil, uh, you know, tampons, toilet paper, food, whatever, toothpaste. I, got, I, I bought an extra now. It's going to cost more later anyway. So I, I got enough to last me. I'm good. And you can barter it. So, and the reason you shouldn't do this is because of what? A few hundred dollars? I mean, seriously? So this was kind of, you know, the, but a lot of points were made said even societies that had collapsed, like Russia and uh, Yugoslavia, and they, so, you know, they, they still stayed there. They survived. They lived on. Where some people that had traveled to Russia had been in and witnessed this firsthand, they're going, yeah, you know, the people that write those history books about how who survived and they just stayed were the ones that didn't die. You know, there were a lot of people starving, a lot of people that were desperate, a lot of crime that went on a lot. And there, you know, there are people that survived it, but, uh, you didn't hear from the people that, you know, lined the mass graves of those that didn't. So 
you know, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. It was an interesting discussion, and the big thing is, is don't be surprised. Now, one uh, an article <clears throat> on Freedoms Phoenix, we have uh, one of the contributors, Chuck Baldwin. Now, he's a pastor that was in Florida that moved to Montana, and I think he's going, I think he's setting himself up to run as governor of Montana. Now, Sundays, Donna and some others and I, we uh, host a, you know, we're going to church. You know, you, you come on in Sunday morning, we have a little bit of breakfast, and we turn on, uh, we're going to watch Pastor Baldwin give what for on whatever. And from a Christian perspective, it's very enlightening to have a pastor that's up there going from a Christian perspective, this is what the proper role of government is, this is what we should be thinking about in the evil empire of, and so on. It's very interesting, but I could see where he's going. He is building a support structure, having had a taste of running for office as the presidential nominee for president in 08 from the Constitution Party, that now he's going to try and parlay that into a run for the governorship in Montana. And so much, they go, no, he wouldn't do that. I said, you know what? Let's do a Google search. Chuck Baldwin, Governor Montana. Boom, there it comes up. Yep. I had a dream, you know, so, you know, here we go. Well, he's talking about God removes a remnant before judgment. <laughs> yeah, the real Christian, they're going to be taken away and so on. Well, you know, what that was uh, you know, made it even more interesting is today on Freedoms Phoenix, we have a another story that says, Atheists offer to rescue Christians' pets after Judgment Day. When Judgment Day comes, which some U.S. Christian fundamentalists insist will happen on Saturday, <laughs> have you thought about what you're going to do with the family dog and cat? In 26 U.S. states, you could have them rescued and adopted by enterprising atheists who have set up a business to care for the animal companions of any Christians who are selected to go to heaven when Jesus Christ comes back. You've committed your life to Jesus. You know you're saved, but when the rapture comes, what's to become of your loving pets who are left behind? Eternal Earthbound Pets says on its website, offering to take that burden off your mind. So, Christian believers that they're going to get raptured and they're gone, you know, you can thank an atheist for taking care of your pet. I just thought we'd share that with you. Alan Brock, uh, I'm sorry, Alan Bach was an editor at the Orange County Register, and he was a speaker at a Freedom Summit. Oh, I think it was 03, 04. Yeah, he's died. And he was well regarded by a lot of people, Have having been an editor. Orange County Register was one of the few papers by Freedom Communications that also had one of the papers here in Arizona, the East Valley Tribune, that uh, we'd make fun of anyway. But um, they were a much more libertarian, freedom-oriented newspaper that would publish a lot of things in perspective that really you couldn't see anywhere else. And one of the people that were responsible for that was Alan Bach. Now, Alan Bach, he was struggling with cancer and he just passed away. So there's a couple of articles on Freedoms Phoenix in honor of his contribution. So I encourage you to go check that out. The commercial real estate, that's a, a big thing that's coming in the news. And we've been talking about this for a long time. Delinquencies on commercial mortgages packaged and sold as bonds surpassed 10% for the first time last month, according to Morgan Stanley. Payments more than 30 days late jumped 26 basis points to 10.15% in April. Morgan Stanley analyst said in a report yesterday, blah, 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 bottom line is this. The commercial real estate bubble has yet to hit. And the reason was <clears throat> is because they've done everything they can to restructure whatever. Yeah, we'll just, we'll say you're current. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not on our books. We're not going to show that these big giant malls and these empty strip centers and all this other stuff is uh, being revalued because you now we're not we're not putting them up for closure. For closure, we're not selling them. We're not. We're a heck no. We're waiting for uh, the recovery to be around the corner. You know, it's just it's just around the corner. Here come uh, maybe not. So now we have yet to see commercial real estate take the inevitable dump that is coming. They've been waiting, kicking the can down, hoping, praying, crossing fingers, and you'll hear it comes. So now we have the commercial real estate is starting to rear its little head. So I'm going, okay, we get, we're going to have that to talk about, I'm sure, next week. Then you have, we are becoming the USSR, says Nixon's 1972 
interpreter in China. Yep, 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 yep. Everybody's starting to see it from older administrations, people all around. It's just like we're talking to Leap. You know, the people that have been there for a long time, you know, where are we going? What, what's happening? You know, we're filling, checking off all the boxes and filling all the blanks at the USSR and East Germany and everybody else from behind the Iron Curtain had. You know, and there's some difference. And now we have gates up there going on how Pakistan didn't tell us bin Laden was there. We need all kinds of reasons to go and invade Pakistan. That's what's on the table now. Man. Talk about it tomorrow. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears is already matured.